I have decided not to wear makeup today because I am having a cozy day and I don't want to. I know that you are mourning the loss of my perfect winged eyeliner that never matches on both sides. I know it's a beautiful sight, but don't worry, you'll see it again soon. <laughs> friends and enemies welcome to horror and inconvenience where things are usually spooky and always weird so ollie criminally does this neat thing where when he does this read what you own challenge in this case um he actually does a short video discussing every single book that he reads during the challenge and that's not normally the kind of thing i'm great at keeping up with but i thought i could make it part of the challenge to challenge myself to do something similar um, try making more frequent and shorter videos and see if I like it and if my viewers like it. Um, I'm still kind of figuring out exactly what the vibe of this channel is besides I like attention and I read a lot. So we'll try this. Um, so first book for my bronze tier read what you own challenge, um, which I did not expect to have one so soon after starting the challenge, but I was about halfway through this one and I picked it back up last night and ended up staying till 2.30 a.m. finishing it. Um, and it is Wrath. Um, so I know nothing about any Nordic languages, um, but it looks like maybe a Sharon Molem and Daniel Krauss. <laughs> um, both of these are pretty big. Um, writers in sci-fi and horror genres from what I understand although I haven't encountered either of them before um, and so yeah they teamed up to write this sci-fi horror book about an intelligent rat um, so the reason I picked this book up initially is because the design is just amazing I mean this cover is great but just this book itself is a really lovely object so you can see here that um, the rat in Wrath has been glossed to kind of, you know, in case you didn't get the pun from the fact that the cover is a rat with bloody teeth. Um, you can see in the rat's eye, there's this image of the great wave overtaking New York City, um, which is a fairly obvious but prominent piece of symbolism within the book. Um, and then if you unwrap this little present, first of all, Bright orange is an underutilized color. And then the end papers are incredible too. Um, we've got all these images of the little rats and some of them have shunts in their heads and that sort of thing like the lab rats in the story do. Then there's a QWERTY keyboard like the one that the genetically modified rats use to communicate. And then you can see underneath it our little genetic sequencing modules. It's just a really nice book to have and to look at. Um, so that in itself really drew me to it. You know, I try not to judge a book by its cover, but I am often initially attracted to a book um, if it has a nice cover or is otherwise a neat thing to own. You know, I'm somewhere between um, a magpie and a collector when it comes to these things. So I love that. Um, but the premise of the story um, I found really appealing too. It's about um, a group of scientists at a company called Edited Pets that they're like, they consider themselves like the Apple store for pets. And so they use genetic modification to enhance um, traits in animals that they think will make them more appealing pets or more appealing products really capitalism i don't know if you know this it's a hot take capitalism is bad um yeah but so they've they've done previous um experiments like the fire fish which is a fish that lights up and glows um or the chatty bird which is supposed to be a type of parakeet that can talk better but turned out to just talk way too much and be a bit of a dud, uh, that kind of thing. So um, their latest project is um, 
a type of rat that they collectively call Sammy. Um, and it is essentially a rat crossbred with human traits in order to make it intelligent and able to speak with humans through um, a speech app that the company has also developed. Um, the human traits, because they make the rat's brains bigger, also make their heads rounder and their bodies cuter looking to the human eye. Um, I personally think that rats are already about as cute as an animal can get, so that seemed unnecessary to me, but there's a lot of anti-rat prejudice in this book, and I don't just mean in the villainous characters. I mean, there's a certain amount of it baked into the story. Um, that actually turned out to be one of the quibbles that I had with the book. But yeah, um, I'm going to spoil a couple of things about the plot, so if that matters to you, um, then you could probably want to click off this video. Um, I'm not going to spoil the ending, um, just kind of how the plot progresses through the middle, because it's hard to describe it without doing that. Um, and in fact, parts of this are given away in the flap copy on the jacket, too. So it turns out that the rat's brains are essentially too big. They keep growing. This leads to aggressive psychopathic behavior and eventually seizures leading to death. Um, and after an incident where several of the intelligent rats um, experience this brain growth all at once and kill a couple of early childhood educators who were working to socialize with them, um, the project is shut down and all of the rats are killed except for one. Um, this one Sammy escapes with the help of a 10 year old boy named Dallas and they form a friendship, but that friendship is doomed by two things. Um, one is Sammy's limited lifespan, um, even more limited than that of the average rat because of the inevitable brain growth that will kill him. And two is the fact that as Sammy becomes more intelligent and more aware of the world around him, he becomes more and more aware of the way that animals are subjugated and maltreated by humans, um, including the humans that raised him at the labs. Um, so this leads him to seek a quest of revenge on the lab in particular and humanity in general, um, although he's pulled two directions because he does genuinely love this little boy who's been nothing but kind to him. Um, so in that way, it really read like a cross between a Michael Crichton or John Saul novel and like a Flowers for Algernon story, um, which honestly, to me, that feels like a winning combination. Um, and overall, I really enjoyed it. Like I said, I stayed up till 2.30 a.m. finishing it. Um, I'm very tired today. Uh, just an absolute page turner. Um, it has multiple perspectives. The benefit of that is that there's something in here for everyone to connect with. The downside is that I think it tries a little too hard to create sympathy in the reader for characters who don't deserve it, namely the designers at the lab. Um, the owner of the company and the primary designer of the genetically modified pets are both major characters, especially in the first half of the book. And I think we're supposed to feel some amount of pathos at their deaths. Um, like I said, mild spoilers, although you can tell from almost the first chapter that these two characters are doomed to die because they're doing the classic mad scientist hubris of humanity thing, right? It's very obvious. Um... I wanted more from the rat and less from the humans. That's my main complaint about this book. There's also a major and unfortunately somewhat sympathetic character who's a rat catcher. I hate that. I cannot describe how much I hate that. I don't think the rest of this book really pulls the emotional and social gravity to make a character that grotesque, that sympathetic in a meaningful way. I just... I don't think it's the kind of book that can pull that off, and so it felt really out of place to me. Um, that said, the rats charm are charming, and when we get their point of view, oh my god, I love that. Um, the little boy Dallas, amazing, and I really do feel myself taking sides with the characters in this book, because they're in an extraordinary situation, and it's a very polarizing one. And so I think a big part of the fun of this is picking a team, um, 
The only problem is you shouldn't really be able to pick a team. The rats are obviously right. Hot take. Rats are better. Um, yeah. So I think there was some, like, inherent anthropocentrism baked into this story, um, which is understandable because, like, part of the premise of the, especially the big horror set piece we get at the end as Sammy starts to take his revenge on humans um, is, is the fear of what rats can do if they're determined enough to hurt you. Um, and I, I adore rats, but yes, they can be terrifying. I love animals that could kill me. I'm a horse girl too. Like horses can kill you without noticing. Rats have to do it on purpose, but uh yeah, so I get that, that some of that has to be just the ick factor of all the horrific things rats can do. But at the same time, I mean, there's no counter argument to the reason the rats rise up against the humans. So it's complicated. I hope some of you will read this and tell me what you thought. Um, because I feel like I have a really strong bias towards animals in general and rats in particular. And I feel like as much as I loved this book, honestly, I'm not quite its target audience. So if you're more into sci-fi um, or you're, I don't know, maybe even still afraid of rats. I mean, it's 2022. Why are you still afraid of rats? Uh, hit me up. What did you think?